So synthetic control is one of the most important methods in economics to understand cause and effect. So to understand if something causes something else. And I'm going to give you an, an example here to un explain the method, which is from a recent paper, Anderson 2019, and he looks at Sweden. And I'm going to give you an example, a recent paper, Anderson 2019, who looks at a carbon tax, which was introduced in 1990 in Sweden. So what you see on this graph here is on the y-axis, you see how much uh, fuel was consumed in Sweden per capita. And on the x-axis, you see time. And what you see is in 1990, Sweden introduced a carbon tax. And what you see in this graph immediately, that gasoline consumption goes down, right? The question is, however, is this really because of the carbon tax? I mean, it could also be that starting in 1990, more, more people in Sweden use bikes. Or it could be that there was a new kind of car introduced that was way more efficient in gasoline. So really, this graph does not tell us the whole story if our carbon tax really caused the decrease in um, fuel, fuel decrease. So in order to answer this question, we need something more elaborate. What we need is a kind of what we call in economics a counterfactual. And a counterfactual is just the question, what would have happened without? You know this counterfactual because we as humans do it all the time in our personal lives, right? For instance, the, the thought, okay, what would have happened? Maybe I would have passed the exam if I wasn't sick. That's a kind of counterfactual. So what would have happened if I wasn't sick on exam day? That's a counterfactual. Or what would have happened if Sweden didn't introduce the carbon tax? introduce the carbon tax. And if we have this kind of counterfactual, then we can say, all right, we have our values for gasoline consumption in Sweden, and we have our counterfactual. So gasoline consumption without the carbon tax, without tax, and the difference, this is what we would call the causal effect of our gasoline tax. So the question is now, how do we get this kind of counterfactual? I mean, Sweden introduced the text, so we can know what would have happened without the text, or can we? And the basic idea of synthetic control is, well, let's look at other countries. Maybe there's a country, um, Norway, which is very similar to Sweden, and maybe their road sector fuel consumption looks like this. And then in 1990, they did not introduce a carbon tax, so they're consumption might look like this. So maybe we could try to argue that Norway is kind of similar to Sweden, but did not introduce the carbon tax. So the difference between Norway and Sweden could be a causal effect of the carbon tax. But you see, this is not really that convincing because in my example here, Norway does not really fit Sweden very well before the carbon tax was introduced. So who would argue? I mean, there's a big difference between Norway and Sweden before. So I would argue that this difference persists, right? We cannot say that the entire difference between Norway and Sweden is because of the carbon tax. And here is where synthetic control comes in. What synthetic control says, all right, let's look at all possible countries that we could find data on. So maybe we have our Norway, maybe we have Denmark, Right? Maybe Denmark trends like this, Denmark. Maybe we have Germany. Germany trends like this. And the key with all of those controlled countries is that they did not introduce the carbon tax. And what as synthetic control we would do is we would try to find an average of all countries that fits Sweden very well before they put in the carbon tax. So what we would do is we would average Denmark, Germany, and Norway, and all the other countries that we find, so that the, the, the average fits Sweden very well pre-trend, before the carbon tax was introduced. And then we look at what happens to our average. 
and we compare it with what actually happened in Sweden. And this average is our counterfactual, right? This is this what would have happened if, if Sweden did not introduce the carbon tax. And to, um, Anderson did actually this in his paper. And here you see the countries that he chose and you see the weights, so how much they contribute to the average. So you see that Denmark contributes 38% to the average. You see that New Zealand contributes 17.7%. Switzerland contributes 6.1%. And how exactly he obtains those um, values, I will explain in a separate video, because the math is a bit more involved. But I'll explain it later. The key thing is he has found an average of many, many countries he used that very well represents Sweden, right? And here you actually see it. So the y-axis here is the metric tons per capita. So carbon from trans, so carbon emissions, and you see time. And the dotted line, this is synthetic Sweden. And the, the, and the normal line is Sweden itself. And you see that synthetic Sweden and Sweden are very much alike. So now here comes the key assumption of the method, which we call would call a common trends assumption. So the assumption is that we have found our average, which is very similar to Sweden, and we assume that our average trends exactly as Sweden does. Right? And the only difference between our Sweden and our synthetic Sweden is that in all of those control countries, there was no carbon tax, and in Sweden, there was a carbon tax. Right? So if, if in any of the control countries, something happened related to carbon, so maybe if Denmark introduced subsidies for electric cars during the period, our estimation would not be valid. So it's very important that we, have, that we can plausibly assume common trends between Sweden and our synthetic control. So they cannot be an extra factor apart from the carbon tax, that influences synthetic Sweden, but does not influence Sweden. Right? And here you actually, I can actually show you the result. You, so you see synthetic Sweden trends upwards and our actual Sweden, so that's the Sweden with the carbon tax, with tax and our synthetic Sweden is the Sweden without the tax, actually trends much lower. And this is actually the result of Anderson. So he finds that because of the carbon tax Sweden introduced, carbon emissions of, of the transport sector went down by 11%, right? And this is actually exactly this difference between our average and between our synthetic average and Sweden itself. And in the next video, I will go a bit more into advanced details on how the weights are obtained for the different countries.